What's going on all you dads out there? It's your favorite nutritionist, John Kovaleski, back with another episode of the DVT Podcast. If you're new to our YouTube channel, please take the time to say hi in the comments, as I'd like to know that you stopped by. And if you would, subscribe to the channel, as well as to click that bell, so that way you know when we upload new content. My guest today is a fellow resident coach in the Dad Body Transformation Group, and he's also a competitor in the NPC Bodybuilding Organization, which is an amateur bodybuilding organization that's closely related with the IFBB, the pros, you know. Um, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm like super honored to have him as a friend, and I'm really excited to have him on the show. Please welcome Philip Bowman. Hey, Philip, how you doing? It's been a while since we talked, buddy. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Oh, can't complain, man. Can't complain. So uh, you've been pretty busy. I mean, you're um, you're actually uh, putting on some size now for another competition, right? Yes. Yeah. So I've been uh, training, helping others train, um, okay. working with them online, right. and I've been uh, trying to put on some mass too. So when I competed this last summer, um, you know, I, to do better, I just need to put on some more size just to mm -hmm. be more competitive. So I've been trying to put on some more size, but I mean, as you do that, more muscle, you have to put on more mass, you have to be in a calorie surplus. So, right. you know, you're not going to have the ripped abs maybe – 24 seven all the time. Um, but it does exactly. feel good because I feel stronger. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not starving to death. Um, <laughs> you know, I feel like, I feel like I look more like a bodybuilder, but then I feel like then my, uh, you know, I, I may not be as ripped as you want to be. So it's just like 50, 50, but yeah, that's my goal right now. So I'm just, uh, right growing with that and going to keep going through that probably till the spring or so. No, I hear you. Yeah, that, that's pretty typical for, for most bodybuilders. They go through cycles mm -hmm. where they're trying to put on size and then they go through mm -hmm. like cutting phases. Um, mm -hmm. But it's actually pretty good that you're, that you're trying to put on size right now, because I do know that uh, one of, one of the protocols that you use when you're putting on size um, as well as when you're cutting is carb cycling, which what's, which is kind of what brought us to today's episode. And that's kind of what we want mm -hmm. to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, so kind of explain to everybody, I've never personally done actual carb cycling myself. I've dabbled in some other things and we'll discuss that here in a little bit, but, but kind of tell everybody what exactly is carb cycling from a bodybuilding standpoint. Okay. So carb cycling is where you have high days of carbs and low days of carbs. Mm -hmm. So you have pre-planned a high carb day, pre-planned low carb days. So the idea is to put your high carb days on your uh, heavy lift days. So okay. you'd want to put those high days on um, like maybe your legs, chest, back days. Mm -hmm. You'd put the low carb days on, um, you know, maybe your arms, shoulders, and like just a cardio or rest day. Okay. Uh, so the idea is to be able to put on mass or even cut also as well just depending on the full calorie intake, mm -hmm. um, you know, without going too far, losing either too much muscle or putting too much fat on, you know? Right. So it's kind of almost like a mediation of, of, you know, high and low carbs. And so the important thing goes to make sure it's planned on days. You plan your high carb days on days when, like I said, when you're going to have a heavy lift day or you're going to have a high lift day. Um, you don't necessarily, because that gives you more energy, more strength, you burn more off. Right. You, nest, you definitely don't want it on a rest day or just a straight up cardio day or something like that, because that's going to be kind of counterproductive. That's when you want to have your low carb, your low carb days on those yeah. lower, yeah, right. not, not as heavy lift days. Yeah. Right, right. And the, and the reason for that is because of, it, it basically pulls back the amount of calories you're eating, correct? Yeah, exactly. So, um, for instance, you, uh, you know, you're going to need more energy for those heavier, you know, for your leg days, leg days are heavy, mm -hmm. chest days. Right. You want to have more energy for those, the back days. You want to have more energy from your carbs, more, um, you know, more, uh, more strength. So mm -hmm. like if I'm eating 40 or 50% carbs on those days, but then we, we would cut it back to smaller carbs, lower carbs on the lighter days, because then that kind of resets your system a little bit. Um, you know, makes you a little bit hungrier, keeps you a little bit leaner, or keeps you leaner. And so that's the way you'd, you'd have your low carbs on those days. So it kind of evens out. You get the energy you need on the heavy days. You don't get it on the, uh, uh, you may have a little less energy, 
but it helps you cut a little bit more on those uh, lighter days or your rest days or a cardio day. Gotcha. gotcha. So now you, you touched on a little bit of my next question that I had for you as far as this stuff goes is like now, how do you split up your macros on on your heavy days versus your either lighter days or non-training days where you're just doing cardio? I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, like what, what are the percentages that you use for your carbs and whatnot? Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know if there's any magical number, you know, probably everybody can, you know, work a split that works well for them. But what I do is, is on my heavy days, um, you know, it's usually 50% carbs, uh, 30% protein, 20% fat, or sometimes 40% protein, 40% the carbs, 20% uh, fat. So, okay. you know, sometimes between 40 to 50 on the heavy days. Mm-hmm. That's where you really want to get some energy, get some strength, you know, you feel good, everything like that. So on the low carb days, you want to take it, <laughs> you want to take it down uh, to almost like, you know, 20% carbs, 20 to 30% carbs for those days. So you're right. just getting minimal amounts, maybe, you know, a, a sweet potato or two, or, uh, you know, half a cup of rice or two, cu- mm-hmm. half, two half cups of rice through the day. So one cup, you know, you're taking it really down. Uh, to a low percentage. So you, I'd say 20 to 30% carbs. Um, but then you want to raise your fat level a little bit on those days. So you're not, right. uh, you got some sort of energy source. Mm-hmm. So what I've done in the past is, um, you know, altered a little bit. So it would usually be 20% carbs, um, you know, 30% fat, and then 50% protein or 40% fat. And, um, then that would relieve 40% protein left. So sometimes you want to bring up the fat on those days. So you've got some more, you at least have some energy source. So while you're training, um, but you don't get too, you know, that keeps you from getting too thick. So usually I like to bring the carbs down as low as 20% on yeah. those uh, days, bring up the fat level a little bit. You might have, you know, those might be the days you're eating a lot of protein, you know, bring up the, you know, 50% protein, 30% fat, 20% uh, carbs, right. or you could go 40% fat. You know, it kind of, you can kind of play with it. Either way works out, but those are the days you bring it down um, to basically pretty low, almost minimal carbs for the day. Right, right. Yeah, and see, that's the thing that most people don't understand is when you are doing any sort of carb cycling, and this was what I found in my research as I was preparing for this particular episode. Um, Fats are very important when you're trying to recover from your heavy training days and yeah. to, to, you know, so many people, like when they're, when they're on a cutting phase, they're afraid of fat and mm-hmm. they have a tendency to, they'll dial back the carbs and they'll still keep their fat low. And, mm-hmm. and that's not always the best way to go about doing things. You need right. healthy fats. Now, mm-hmm. mind you, you don't want to be sitting around eating cheeseburgers and, and, you know, <laughs> other fatty things that aren't really good for right. you. But right. you, you need to make sure that when you dial back, typically what I what I would suggest that people do is on days where you're either training very, very light or doing nothing but light cardio, I would kind of, as you bring down the carbs, I would take whatever you bring down in carbs and I would split that between protein and fat. That way you're elevating your fats a little bit, which are going to help you in the recovery process. And at the same time, you're going to be giving yourself that little extra protein, which also does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, You know, so, and it can work either way, you know, you can use it to bulk up or you can use it to slim down or cut down. It really just depends on, so, you know, we talked about the percentages, but it all really depends on your overall calories for the day. So I could be looking at 4,000 calories for the day, only 20% carbs, you know, for that day, but that could be way more than if you're only on 18 calories for the 1800 calories for the day, right? 20% carbs. So, I mean, it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're always, you're going to be cutting because you're having low carb days. I use it for a lot of the people I train. So a lot of people I've trained may not be going for a contest, but they just want to keep like a year round, nice, even lean look. And so this kind of keeps them regulated, you know, they can, Mm -hmm enjoy they may not want to be bulky and huge and they may not be ripped and cut they want to be moderate and so this allows them to you know have some days they maybe enjoy a little more but also have some days that they cut a little more and get 
you know, kind of hungry um, before they start in on the next, uh, the high carb day. So yeah. it really all depends on your overall calorie intake. Mm-hmm. And then you split that up into your portions from, yep. or your and, uh, macros and it, from there. Right. And it depends on your goals too. I mean, because as you yep. touched on, you can use carb cycling to both put on size as well as for, for weight loss. Um, it, it depends on your goals. It depends on the way you have a tendency of doing things as far as how you want to handle it. Because there are some people that, you know, may not necessarily be bodybuilders. They may just be people that are, you know, just want to use carb cycling to lose weight. Depending on depending on their metabolism and their lifestyle and their workouts, all these things that you and I as coaches reach out to our clients to try to get all that information because the information, the information exchange between the coach and the client is extremely important. Okay. Mm-hmm. The more, you know, I say this all the time, the more we know about our clients, the better equipped we are to be able to, to, to help them reach their goals. So if you've got somebody that's trying to put on size, like in, in your particular case, um, when you use carb cycling, you're pretty much going to want your car, your, your total calorie intake to stay the same because your calorie intake is designed for you to be at a surplus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Whereas somebody that's using carb cycling as a way to lose weight, they're going to want to actually on those days, they're not only going to cycle back their carbs, they're not going to be playing around with their calories to keep them the same level. They're actually mm-hmm. going to want to let them drop as they drop the calories from the carbs okay for example each gram of carbs has four calories okay so say they drop down to on a day where they're eating a moderate or a high day they may be eating 150 grams of carbs they drop down to 50 grams of carbs well they just lost 400 calories but rather than adding that those calories back in they just let themselves stay in that deficit and doing that actually works better as far as using carb cycling for a weight loss protocol. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. I've done it two ways. I've done it where I keep the calories the same every day. Mm-hmm. Like my calories are the same, but I've also done it where I've had high calorie and low cal- calorie days on those low carb days. So I've done right. it, I've done it both ways. Um, I kind of like keeping it the same calories every day, but mm-hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily you know, set in stone, it could work either way, but exactly what you said, you know, um, when you bring those carbs down on those low carb days, and if it brings the calories down, that's a big cut for them there too, you know, especially if they're cutting, trying to right. lose weight or lose mass. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and so I, you, you know, and so one of the things I do is I always have my, I always set a meal plan out, but if I'm figuring it for myself, Mm-hmm. I use uh, my fitness pal because, yes. you know, it allows me to adjust it. Okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be my high day. I changed the little macros in it. So yep. I just know that I'm hitting my, my goal. Um, then change it to the low day. So I know that I'm hitting mm-hmm. my goal, right. you know, and that's, that's really important for people that want to do it. You may not really know how to, how to actually figure their calories or whatever like that. So my fitness pal, works really well to know you know you can keep the same calories every day or even alter them and just still kind of play with the ratios and make sure you're filling up each of your spaces you know for the day if you're doing the carb cycling yeah yeah exactly you know this this is where um you know having information on the internet and and people you know, the internet's an absolutely great resource. So many people can can learn about so many different things. Um, and as far as health and fitness goes, there is a literal ton of information out there. Mm-hmm. But the thing that people need to remember, if they're, if they're not working with a coach, the thing that people need to remember if they're trying to handle this on their own is that don't just look at a specific set of numbers on a website or a Facebook post or something like that and say, okay, well, this person lost 80 pounds because this is what they did. That's great. That works for them. There's no guarantee that that's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. And the thing that people need to keep in mind is that as you lose weight, whatever numbers you start off at calorie wise, when you start to lose weight, you know, like every month you should sit down and refigure out those numbers. Because mm-hmm. as you lose weight, 
your calorie intake is going to change. What you what you need to intake in order to continue to proceed to wherever your goal is, you know, that's going to change if people need to yeah. take that into account. And I think some people, the first thing when I, you know, write a plan for some people, and there's most most of the people I train are wanting to the drop some sort of fat, you know, right. there's a, they're a little, uh, you know, flabby or whatever, and they want to drop a little bit some, and they think they don't want to have any high carb days because that's just going to make them fat. You know, that's mm -hmm. what they determine, but it's, it's not true. You know, I mean, if it will actually, that's how you're going to build some muscle, you know, yeah. to fill yourself out more. So mm -hmm. that's why we have to have those high days. So don't be afraid like women, you know, sometimes are real afraid to have the high carb days because that's going to, you know, that's going to, it, carbs are associated with fat, but it's really just should be associated with energy. I mean, too many carbs are associated with fat, you know, and the wrong ones, but, um, you know, just having a high carb day, is, it, that's giving you the energy for your lifting and you're working out. And that's, that's the whole point in it. Right. Right. And that, and that, that's another thing too. Um, and, and we're going to get into, how carb cycling is close to um, one or, well, actually there's two different ketogenic protocols. Um, what people need to take into account is anytime that you're playing around with your carb intake, if you normally eat 150 grams of carbohydrates every day, okay, and then you change things up and you start eating 75 grams of carbs a day, let's just use that number for example, okay, your body is going to deplete a certain level of stored carbs that you had in your muscles, the form of stored carbohydrates in the muscles called glycogen. Okay. As you deplete that glycogen, you're actually going to lose weight because for every gram of glycogen that you store in your muscles, you also store three to four grams of water. So what people see when they start to eliminate carbohydrates, like people with the ketogenic diet, um, you you lose water in the process and so you see a larger amount of weight loss mm -hmm. in a faster window of time mm -hmm. because of that so mm -hmm. what people need as far as people that are just carb cycling what they need to keep in mind is that that scale is going to fluctuate as your as your diet fluctuates you know what i'm saying as your mm -hmm. intake fluctuates from day to day your, your scale is going to fluctuate too, which is why I don't know about you, but personally with my clients, I, uh, I tend to tell them to only weigh yourself about once every two to three weeks, once a mm -hmm. month, if you can stand to wait that long, yep. because yep. your, 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 your scale is constantly going to lie to you. It's constantly going to be bouncing up and down as you fluctuate your intake. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Yeah, exactly. Another thing that I like about carb, well, one of the things you said, you know, uh, ketogenic diets, people will see, you know, a, a big weight loss, but you also mentioned the water. I mean, to me, a lot of times they end up with a flat look too, as well, especially if you're trying to build muscle. So mm -hmm. that's why um, the carbs help you have a fuller look, you know, they, that, that's why we have the, you know, the higher days. I mean, some people, the ketogenic keto has really worked well for them. I just, mm -hmm. You know, it's also very extremely specific, you know, yes. and it's not. And the thing I like about carb cycling is it's flexible, mm -hmm. you know, like, so let's, let's say, for instance, I'm going to a wedding and I may be, I'm going to probably be eating big tonight or maybe going to have, you know, I know I'm going to have some carbs there or something like that. Right. I'm going to switch my heavy day, my heavy lift day to today. I'm going to mm -hmm. lift heavy. I'm going to eat carbs all day and I'm able to work it into, you know, some, something that I have going on. Right. Oh, I lost your audio. Can't hear you. Shows I'm connected. Hey, there you are. You're back. Is it on? Okay. Yeah, All right. it's on. All right. Not sure what happened. <laughs> All right. Here we are. Okay. Yeah, we're back. Um, all right, very good. So uh, it's flexible. I feel like it's flexible because, I mean, the ideal way is to uh, have, you know, a high, low, high, low, low, high day. You know, all, you, know you don't want to have all your high days together for your carbs. But, you know, if you need to switch up a lift or switch up something because of, you know, some, some social thing or you're going to go celebrate or, you know, you can make that your high carb day and switch it around, you know. So I feel like it's not, there's some variety that allows you to be a little bit more, 
you know, flexible, just keep your heavy lift on your heavy, on your high carb day. And you can kind of alternate it that works, you know, best for your, your own schedule, you know? Right. So, right. Yep. yeah, it is, you know, I mean, I guess what it all boils down to is no matter what dietary protocol you're on, it, it takes discipline. Okay. Yeah. Um, it does. I, I will say that on, you know, on a carb cycling protocol, um, you can, you, it, you're right. You can actually say, okay, well, you know, I know that I'm going to be going to such and such a place. So, and I know that, you know, it's, it's like me, anytime I have a family function, like Thanksgiving or a birthday party or whatever, I live life. You know, I mean, I take part in yeah. everything that's going yeah. on. I'll eat birthday cake and all stuff. Yeah. And I'm even diabetic. So it's, it's like, you know, it, it, it's definitely something that I have to watch, but the bottom line yeah. is I live life because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can be in the best shape of your life, but if you're making yourself miserable because you're not enjoying your life, what good yeah. is it? What good is it? You know? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's like, you know, you just have to take everything with a grain of salt and, and carb cycling, yeah. but carb cycling is, is good for that because you can, you can say, I know I'm going to be eating a lot of carbs this day. So I'll make sure this week I train back or I train legs on that day. Whereas right. with some of the other protocols, you really can't do that. Yeah. Now for someone that's going to be doing it, you know, carb cycling on their own, it's important to know that when we say carbs, that doesn't mean birthday cake and pizza and wedding cake every day. It doesn't mean, right. it doesn't mean a cheat day mm -hmm. you know some people think oh well today's my high day oh so i'm gonna go to golden corral you know but that's not <laughs> necessarily what it means it means you're eating more carbs but it's in good forms you know right. uh sweet potato maybe rice mm -hmm. you know things along those lines that's what we're that's what we're looking at not just high carb day doesn't mean cheat day yep. you know so exactly or or or, or pick out day yeah, so that's, that's one specification to make. Yeah, yeah, it, indeed, and and it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're doing carb cycling or this next thing, which I'm getting ready to talk about, which which I, I think I know a little more about than you do, which is the targeted ketogenic diets and the cyclical ketogenic diets. Um, the way those things work, although they're similar to carb cycling, they're different in the fact that people that do carb cycling tend to eat moderate carbs most of the time and then they just have their high and low days depending on their workout schedule when you're on a targeted ketogenic diet for we'll start with that one for example um you pretty much live a keto lifestyle all the time which means you most most people can be in ketosis at 50 grams of carbs and under okay mm -hmm. so with targeted keto, what you would do is on the days that you work out, no matter what it is that you're doing, about an hour before you go work out, you take in 30 to 50 grams of what they call high glycemic carbs. Now it can be white rice. If you know anything that's going to get into your system within an hour is, is pretty much it. Um, I mean, most people that I know that do it actually take advantage of the fact that they want that fast insulin response. So that they, they choose that as their time to eat like gummy bears, things like that, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it breaks down mm -hmm. very quickly in the system and gets in your bloodstream. And then you do your workout. So during your workout, you're burning up those carbs. Okay. And then yeah. immediately, well, not immediately, but within an hour after your workout, you take in another 50, 30 to 50 grams of carbs, but those are more on the middle glycemic to low glycemic side. The purpose of doing yeah. it that way is keep, so keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah, yep. Go ahead. Um, no, just keep talking. Yeah, you're fine. So, but by doing it that way with the, with the middle glycemic carbs or the lower glycemic carbs, what you wind up getting is you wind up getting your muscles. The glycogen fills back into your muscle stores. It's not enough mm -hmm. to keep you out of ketosis for a long period of time. Most people that do carb, targeted ketogenic diets can be in ketosis within three to four hours after they're done with their workout. So they don't have to worry about, you know, oh my goodness, I ate between before my workout and after my workout, 800 grams of carbs. So it's going to take me three days to get back into ketosis. You don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I realized my laptop needed charging. So oh, I didn't know. It, it, it's all good. Actually, I, did, I had, I had I to grab the cord real quick. I had switched the screen over to spotlight on me, so they didn't even know what you were doing. Good. 
Good. Oh, perfect. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Never mind. Then I didn't. Then I didn't do anything. No, you didn't. You didn't do anything <laughs> except for we we provided a little entertainment because they're probably going, "What's he talking about?" <laughs> okay. Now, right, as far back. as the cyclical ketogenic diet, how that tends to work is you have you you live a keto lifestyle all week long. Some people do it in 24 hours. Some people do 36 or 48. Um, but how it tends to work is you live, a, you, you know, you're pretty much keto all week long, eating under 50 grams of carbs. And then the last day before you start your refeed, as it's called, they you do what's called a depletion workout. Typically how that works, uh, when I did it, what works best, what worked best for me was I would pick two exercises for each muscle group. And I would do five sets of 25 on each one of those exercises for each muscle group. So I basically did a total body workout with two exercises for each muscle group, 25 reps each set, okay? Completely depleting all the glycogen stores out of my muscles. Then you go through a process where over the course of however long your refeed is, whether it's a day, two days, whatever the case may be, most people are eating at least 800 grams of carbs, if not a thousand. Okay. It's called super compensation. And what happens is when you do it, your muscles are just like sponges and they grab all this glycogen and they just, it just crams into your muscle cells. Okay. By doing this, it also resets certain hormones in your body. Like leptin is another one. It, it's, it's a big one for um, creating the feeling of satiety. It makes you feel like you're full. Um, when people are under dietary protocols, they have a tendency to be low in leptin levels. And when that happens, it, they find themselves, it, it, it's harder to eat enough to, to feel like you're full. Okay. It also resets cortisol levels, which we all know cortisol is a, is a big one for um, controlling fat storage and things of that nature. Right. So you do your refeed and then after your, your refeed time is over, um, you jump right back on the keto bandwagon and that works for some people did not yep. work for me. I tried it for a month and it was like, you know, you, I'm a fat kid at heart, Philip. You know, I am, I used to yep. weigh 400 pounds. I'm a big fat kid at heart. And if you tell me that I can eat a thousand grams of carbs in a day, that shit is not going to yep. end well at all. And it didn't, yep. it didn't, it yep. didn't work well. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think sometimes I think that, you know, um, I know in the past for me, when I've had cheat times or refeed times, sometimes it just becomes out of control. You know, it's like you, it's almost like if you stay under a closer gun all along, it, it sometimes it goes better, but yeah, it depends on the person, you know, for sure. So yeah, it's a binge and there it, it's like yeah. a binge that happens mm -hmm. when you do it. The thing you have to be really careful with is when you're on a, you know, you're on anything and you know, I'm allowed. So I have two cheat meals a week, you know, mm -hmm. and I really do cheat on them, but right. you just have to make sure that that's your cheat meal, not a cheat day. Um, you know, and so just because high calories doesn't mean, uh, a high, you know, high bad for you food or high junk food. It doesn't mean a binge day. Yeah. Right. And so like exactly like you said, if you're going to have a, a refeed day like that, it's got to be carbs that are, you know, within a plan, you know, right. plan for you. So yeah, it's not, right. but yeah, I mean that, that could be, that I could see how that could work too, because I could even see how it could work like in a bodybuilding situation, because that could really make you fuller. You could get really depleted and then fill you up to make you look a little fuller and thicker when you have that refeed day. Right. So I mean, I could definitely see that. And I know a lot of bodybuilders actually use that yeah. getting closer to a contest. Yeah. I've always done, I've always had a few high carb days all along, but mm -hmm. you know, I know that some do it where they're low carbs for, six seven eight days almost no mm -hmm. carbs and then have that one refeed yep, day have that get... one refeed right before the competition yeah. because right. what just it does it just again. it just it just possible well you know it's it's just like it's just like i was saying before you know when you store every, every gram of glycogen that you're storing in your, in your muscles you pull in three to four grams of water so it gives the muscle bellies uh -huh. a fuller look and and yeah. that's why they do it that's also why mm -hmm. I know, uh, I don't know if you've ever done it, but I know a lot of bodybuilders when they're going through their carb restriction, they also restrict their water. And as they get closer mm -hmm. and closer to the competition, they restrict less and less water. And then mm -hmm. they, they actually 
Um, they actually super hydrate themselves. They, they add in a bunch of water at the same time they're eating the carbs and it gives their muscle. Yeah. It, it's like their, their skin's getting ready to split because their muscles get so full. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had done, uh, high, high water actually all along and then, uh, cut it off before the show, like a, like a day before the show. But if you've drunk enough, then you continue to, you know, urinate it off and that, that helps keep, get the water out. But yeah, you, and then you want to still be able to drink some and then have that carb rush right before you are on there. Cause you to make yourself look full. So just, you know, like what we've said all along, the, the reason for me, the reason to keep carbs in a diet is it still keeps you in a full state or in a full feeling. I had tried for keto that I had tried in the past, you know, for me, I'm not an expert on it. So if I, anyone's listening and they have, you know, they say I'm saying things wrong, I probably am, but I felt awful. You know, I didn't feel good um, the time I was doing it. I know once they become adapted, they feel great. I never felt good i may have been doing it wrong but i didn't feel good mm -hmm. um but with the carb cycling you can feel in my opinion you feel good all the time i mean you may have some hungry days but then you have some days where you're able to fill yourself up again and feel satisfied um right. and then feel feel strong so um that's the aspect that i've always liked about it and most the coaches i've worked with have used also right right and, you know, yeah. it's like, and actually, uh, I think Emil and I are the resident experts in the dad bod transformation group when it comes to keto. I have lived, they are, yeah. Yeah, I've lived the ketogenic lifestyle, lifestyle, bleh, lifestyle, I'll get it out here in a minute, for uh, for a little over two years now, off and on. And um, Emil, I know Emil's been on it for a while as well. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. keto, you're, you're exactly right. But, it, you know, it's at the end of the day, like we've been saying all along, it's, it doesn't matter whether it's carb cycling or the ketogenic protocol, the Atkins diet, this crazy snake diet that I hear people talking about now, which I don't know what it is. And I really don't care to know. Um, yeah. Everything doesn't work for everybody. You need to find what works for no. you and yeah. stick to it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly right. That's, that's exactly right. Um, and I suppose every body type, you know, every body type doesn't work with every type of diet. You know, That's every right. lifestyle doesn't fit with every type. So you have to do what works for you. Thing, just to, I always just want to, the thing that I, uh, you know, have learned over the time period is you got to learn your food. If you're doing, you can do it on your own. You don't have someone helping your coaching. You need to learn what foods are what kind, get what kind of uh macros for you know what is a protein what mm -hmm. does get you know we all think we know sometimes you start thinking you know something's good for you and it's actually not so right. you know learn what is a protein learn what is a carb learn what is a fat mm -hmm. and what are the good fats and good proteins and good carbs and you have to you know educate yourself on those things because things i used to think you know i remember when i I wanted to be a bodybuilder, but I didn't, all I did was work out, but I didn't really know how to eat. I'd right. go about it in really weird ways. You know, I just thought if I starved myself, if I ate a bunch of salads, you know, if I just, and that was probably six, seven years ago before I really took the time to learn and research. And then once yeah. I did, I learned, I mean, you realize how you have to do it and the foods that you have to, that you have to eat, you know, and so educate yourself is what I'm saying, you know, for people that should educate yourselves on what is, we can say protein and carbs all day, but if they're hearing, you know, fatty brisket and pizza, that's wrong. You know, that's not the protein. That is a protein and that'll get you carbs, but that's not going to do the trick. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the same, it's the same thing with keto. People go on a ketogenic diet and they think it's an excuse to do nothing but eat pounds and pounds of, of bacon and cheeseburgers and all this stuff. Okay. As mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll touch on this real quickly. Okay. There, the original ketogenic diet was created back in the 1920s and it was a medical treatment to help children with epilepsy. That's where it first came from. Okay. Medical or what they call nutritional ketosis is based on a extremely high fat, like in most cases, 60 to 70% fat. And then if it's 70% fat, most people are like 70% fat, 20% protein, or 25% protein, and then 5% carbs. Okay. Some people even go zero carbs. The problem with nutritional ketosis for fat loss 
is that as long as you are shoveling fat in your face, you're never burning any of your body fat, okay? So nutritional ketosis is fine for someone when they're first getting started in it, provided that they keep their electrolytes high. And that's probably what happened with you when you tried it. Yeah. If you were feeling mm -hmm. bad, your electrolytes were probably low because as we touched on earlier, as soon as you start to deplete all those carbs out of your body, you're also losing water. And when you lose water, just like when you're sweating, you lose electrolytes. So it's like mm -hmm. all of my clients that are on ketogenic protocols, I stress to them very, very highly, make sure that you're taking in, take, you know, the best way to do it is, is get a gallon jug of water and take and put a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt in it. Shake it up throughout the day and drink that gallon of water throughout the day. Pink Himalayan salt not only has the sodium in it, it also has magnesium and potassium. So that helps to keep your electrolyte levels elevated so you don't feel bad like what you did when you were on keto. But now mm -hmm. once you get to the point where you're not, you're not shoveling all that fat in your face, once you become fat adapted and your body's mm -hmm. producing and, and producing ketones and your body's using them correctly, at that point in time, you actually need to bring down your fat levels and bring up your protein. Because at, when you do that, your body's like, okay, I burn fat for fuel and I'm not eating enough. So I need to take it from the belly. I need to take it from any place where there's body fat. That's what your body does. It's going to look, it's going to look for triglycerides and it's going to break them down into ketones for use as energy. So just a quick, that's just a quick thing. And we're going to get into more because eventually Good. I'm going to nail a meal down and we're going to do a podcast all about keto and all the different protocols yes. and stuff like that. So well, I, I just thought wife, that was important wife, to throw in there. No, that's really good. And uh, like I, I've always said, you know, I, I, I want to be able to help people because when I tried it, I tried a lot of trial and error and incorrectly, you know, mm -hmm. I just, yep, uh, I did too. Kind of, uh, and I'm not, uh, uh, sometimes I'm not a researcher. Sometimes I'm like, Oh, that looks good. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start it Monday, mm -hmm. you know, and do it. And it, it doesn't work, you know, because right. I, I haven't researched it or understood it enough. That was in the past, you know, then when I decided that, but I mean, if I did it, other people are going to do it too. So I feel like, sure. you know, now if we can understand it better and, you know, explain it to people better, but yeah, that, that was a failed keto attempt on my part in the past with lack of education and just like surface knowledge. You know? Right. Like, right. But, I would actually, I'll be, I'll be honest, not putting you on the spot or under the gun here, but I would actually be interested one time when you're going to do a competition to like do your carb cycling while you're trying to put on size, but then try to use a ketogenic protocol to cut because with a mm -hmm. ketogenic protocol, yeah, I'll get it out. Ketogenic protocol, you still are taking in moderate to high amounts of protein as well. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. maintain the muscle mass and it just focuses on grabbing the fat. So I would be interested yeah, to see, think... you, see you try that one time as an experiment and see how well it works for you. I definitely think it could it could definitely work. Um, I've never tried it again, just because it's for me it's not conducive to my life. But mm -hmm. when you're uh, when you're in the cutting phase of a contest, nothing's really conducive. So nothing <laughs> nothing's really yeah. very yeah, nothing exactly nothing's really very comfortable. No. So it would be something I'd go for, and I know other bodybuilders. I know some do for sure. So yeah, I might. Right. Well, I might exactly. to go. have you seen, um, have you seen that? Uh, do you follow Seth Verosi at all on YouTube? I mm -hmm. think we've talked about yeah. him before. He, mm -hmm. That man is funny as hell. I, I love his stuff, but he has actually recently done an experiment where he's gone keto and mm -hmm. he is just, you know, it's, it's like, I just watched a video that he put on YouTube the other day and he's like, he was telling his business partner, he's like, look, he said, I made this list that I was going to put all these pros and cons down of what the bad things were about keto and what the good things were. And he said, the good stuff about keto on the list is this long. And I've just got two things on the, on the, on the con side. And that's, I don't feel the same in the gym and I don't get the same pumps in the gym, which is completely mm -hmm. normal because yeah, you know, you don't have, you don't have the carbs in your muscles. So your muscles flatten out. So, I mean, there, yeah. the bottom line is this, all these different dietary protocols, keto, carb cycling, all these other different things, they all have their place and they all have their people that they work for. I'm not, right, you know, exactly. you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big person for saying, don't just 
jump on the latest fad diet that comes out and say, well, you know, that's going to be the secret for me losing weight because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could try that if you want to, but at the end of the day, fad diets are called fad diets for a reason. They come and they go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you don't, yeah. if you don't have the time or the resources or whatever to do the research yourself, hire a coach, you know, mm -hmm. the, bottom, the bottom line is this. I know most people that, that stop at Starbucks three times a week. Okay. If you start the street at stop at Starbucks three times a week, and you add that up over a month. In most cases, mm -hmm. unless the guy is overcharging, you can afford a coach. And that's an investment yeah. in your health. And, and, yeah. me, and you'll probably lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you'll, you'll probably, probably lose weight from not, not eating Starbucks all the sugary stuff. Right? Yeah. From not drinking all the yeah. sugary stuff at Starbucks. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. exactly. Yep. yep. So, For sure. So right, buddy, I agree. Well, I, I mean, totally agree. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we covered the I think we covered the subject pretty well, um, guys. Yeah. In the on the YouTube channel, I will I will link um, Philip's Facebook so that way you can reach out to him if you have any questions. Um, if you're viewing this on the T2 Nutrition website, I will link the fat the Dad Bot Transformation Group. So if any of you guys are interested in checking that out, there's a lot of resources. There's a, there, and there's a ton of motivation and support in the Dad Bot Transformation Group. So anybody that is following me through T2 Nutrition, I highly recommend that you join this group. So I think we're going to wrap this one up, Philip. I want to thank you for joining me on the show again, hey. and I, I'm sure we'll thank do you. something again sometime soon. Sounds good. Let's go All for right, it. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks. You have a good day. All right, bye.